Hello everyone, my name is Sergio Perez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawkward Systems. In today's video, I'd like to discuss the new 2016 assembly feature, Mate Controller. When working with assemblies with a large number of mates, such as this file here, manipulating the actual model may be a little bit difficult just due to the a number of mates and the available or open, free, open degrees of freedom within the file. So we've all probably come across this where when you're trying to manipulate that model, you know, other things or other components within the assembly actually start moving as well. It can be a very frustrating thing, especially when you're working with a large assembly file there. So in order to accommodate that, you know, some of the things that we've suggested is creating multiple configurations and being able to control when those mates would be on or off. So and then in that case, you would have more than one position uh, allocated to each configuration. Somewhat of a tedious task there to do that and it actually adds to your file size just because you're making several copies of that mate uh, or that configuration uh, within one file. So in 2016 they actually created that mate controller feature that accommodates this such e issue here. So let me reload this to the original position here and the mate controller feature is located when we actually go into the insert. So inside an assembly we can go to insert mate controller and I'm actually going to open up one that I've already created but this is how the property manager looks like. The first thing that we need to do is select all the mates that I want to be able to manipulate. In this case, I conveniently rename some of the mates to make it clear exactly what position I'm actually going to be moving. So once you select all the mates you want, the next thing to do is actually create a new position. Uh, I actually created a few of them here where you see that I have my home position, which is what you see now, but you see that I can select different positions that I've already created. All right. So if I go back to my home position, creating one, all we need to do is just add the position. I can call this whatever I want, hit OK, and then I can start manipulating each mate one by one. So you see that once I start manipulating this, I'm not really affecting any of the other mates or any of the other possible movements that this assembly can have. So I can rotate the model here. I can extend that upper arm, kind of lower it down there. I can input the numeric value if I want to or use these drag handles or if you like to do things uh, graphically I can turn on this lock symbol here and you see that I can then control the actual position here if I can grab this there we go so you see we can grab this then graphically here so we can lock out all those other positions we have multiple ways to control this but you see that we're controlling those mates one by one and we're specifying you know what the actual po overall position is you know through these little snapshots that we're controlling here once you create the final position uh, within this category here we can then say you know update position there and that's pretty much it it keeps a log of all those different positions through this pull down menu and we can play around with them and can clearly communicate what this position will look like. Even better, because this arm or this assembly file specifically is going to have an actual moving fluid movement, it actually creates an animation for us where we can control the amount of time each position is going to last. So you see that I've, I have a total of 10 positions here uh, and I can control the overall thing is going to be 13 seconds. So I can then calculate that and you'll see that it's going to go step by step and show you how each position is going to transition over to the next. All right, so now we are clearly communicating to, you know, whoever this is going to get sent to, the assembler or whatever it may be, we now are clearly communicating how the overall position of the assembly is going to take place. So even better, now that we've specified all the positions, we even created this nice animation, we can export this out to an actual video. So we can export out to an, an animation file. If we have PhotoView 360, we can use the, the PhotoView 360 render, so we can get a nice looking video as well for this actual animation. But because we are dealing with animations here, we can actually, once we accept that, we can go to the motion study here and we see that this is the traditional way that we've created any moving assembly within SOLIDWORKS. The more complex the geometry is, 
you know, the more time that we're going to have to spend to specify and spec specify the actual time each position will take manually within this interface. But now since we've already done that step through the make controller, we can go to the animation wizard and we have this option to pull that information from that feature into a traditional animation tool here. So we can go through the motions here, specify how long we want to run this for, and then we can calculate it and you see that it's going to have the total time of 13 seconds and it's pretty much showing us the same animation that it did through the make controller. This makes creating traditional animations very easy and very powerful because if we actually run a motion study we can also export kinematic information from this make controller tool that's exported now into the traditional animation there. As you can see make controller is a great feature and more importantly easy to use. I can see this feature being utilized for multiple reasons to communicate the movement of the assembly. I hope you found this feature and video helpful, and thanks for watching.